Net Positive, baby. Episode 54. 54. 54. Brought to you by AG1 by Athletic Greens, baby. I'm headed out on vacation. I'm going on vacation tomorrow. Nice. Yeah. I don't like to I don't I don't like to pronounce words good up front. Yeah. That's I get good. into it. You don't want to set the bar too high. No, it's like working out. You just start with a warm-up. A big I did a big word too early though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> vacation. Yeah. They're going to <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um uh, yeah, but we're going to you know that you know vacation food. Mm. It's a nightmare. Yes. It's a, hey dude, what you got? You want to go ham set? What do you got in that cooler over there? Mm-hmm. All right, dude, we're going late night. You what you want to do? Order pizza. I'm hanging with the AG1 though. Yep. Up top. We usually get, you go, here's what happens on vacation. Iced coffee at about 11, mm-hmm. a ham sandwich and some Doritos, followed by some jumbo shrimp. Nice. That's not going to cut it. No. AG1, baby, has been a part of millions of mornings since 2010. Every scoop is packed with 57. What? Wow, 55 vitamins, minerals. 75. Oh, I don't know. 75. What did I say? 57. Dang, and then I, oh, I did, uh, what's and that then thing 55. called? I'm uh, anorexic. I get the numbers That's switched. what that is, yep. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Andrew, nothing from Andrew, dude. Yeah, yeah. I've said, I've said that joke before, I think. Yeah. Have I? Yeah. Shoot, dude. I think I, <laughs> I said 70, 57? 57, then 55, and it is 75. Wow, dude, I got to get it together. Uh, every scoop is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients of the highest quality to give major benefits like gut and mood support. Mood support, you need that on vacation with your family, bro, for sure. Mm. Boosted energy and even healthier looking skin, hair, and nails. Bro, I'm going to come back looking fire. Uh, we, a lot of people take a bunch of pills. Mm-hmm. Not us. No. Nah, straight. We just go straight with the scoop into the into the water. That's it. It's easy. Scoop Plus, down there on vacation, you never. Hey, does it, you got some frosted flakes? Where's a bowl? Does anyone have any milk? Where are the spoons? Mm. You don't want to do all that. No. And it's hey. tough to. It's tough. You get on the vacation, you lose your routine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This though, this keeps you. It's keeps like you us on, on the road. Ag one off the jump, baby. One scoop of powder mixed with water once a day. Ag one gives you increased energy and mood support, making it easy to live your best life. If you're looking. For an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens has given you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash net positive. That is athleticgreens.com slash net positive. I was going to spell Athletic Greens, but if you don't know how to spell Athletic Greens, I think you got other issues in life. Yeah. I think you got other issues in life. You're not ordering it, I'll tell you that. Right. If you don't know, dude, I was, I was the telling Lydia this the other day you ever like um show someone like a meme and like and they like can't read like and they can't read yeah not can't read but just read slow yes I'm I'm that guy you are yeah I read very you do too Andrew that you go hey look at because now you're looking at it on you on their they're holding it right it's on their clock yep and and they've already ingested it so they know what the words are. I know how annoying I am at this. You're slow. Like I, I not only yeah. am I going to take a sec. I need to hold the phone. Yeah. Because if if your hand isn't steady, then oh I'm yeah, yeah. Have a and, time. and your hand's not steady, and we're on a tour bus. And yeah. It's like, right. Yeah, and it's not because your hand goes with your eyes. Right. And you like make it. Yeah. So I have like I'm going to have to take. The Let phone me take from it, you. and I'm then you got to sit it. down. You got to yeah. Now it's not funny anymore because yeah. it took way too and long. And then you're like, why is this guy taking so long to read? Yep. Well, and then you got to process the joke if it's right. a meme with words and. Well, we were talking, I was talking, we were um, at, what's that place? Pins. You know Pins? Yeah. And there's like a bunch of like table games there. Yep. They got like, uh, they got all kind of games like, uh, uh, what's it called uh, when they throw the? Darts. No, when you put, when you have the, the a beer, beer pong, but oh, like yeah. bigger. Sorry, yeah. I don't know why I could get to beer pong. Uh, they have all that. These is not, hold on. You all tangled up there? That's not going to work, dude. <laughs> all right, I got it. <laughs> Last night we heard a talk. <laughs> when in doubt, just pull harder. I got it. You got it? We can got you hear? You. Yeah, we got it. All you. right, I can hear that now. Yeah. Uh, can you see that or no? No, unfortunately. I wish you could. All right, I'm good to go now. I got you, it. I, do you want me to come help you? No, I got it. I'm good to go. Yeah, they, I couldn't hear in the headphones. Oh. Yeah. No, all good. No, they were, uh, there was this game where uh, it's like a bunch of these like uh, – um, rope little ring and you, it's like a ring toss game and yeah. there's a bunch of like hooks that have a bunch of numbers on them like 11 12 9 6 4 7 like and numbers. i was like yeah yeah i got yeah numbers you heard of those <laughs> and i go 
Dude, I don't really, I don't really get into like the on TikTok like a ick, you know, like a mm. ick. That's what it's an ick for me. Like I don't, I don't like that energy. But like, and then, but I was like, what would, what would be a ick for me is not being able to do math. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you got a seven, a four, and a three, and they're up there like, like you have to. Uh-huh. Add it yep. and write it. Yep. There's a like a pen to like keep track of the score. Somebody's up there like counting on fingers. Yeah, they're like seven and a three. They go, what's that? What's that? Bro, eight, dog. <laughs> that would if I that's terrible. But if I like if, if like doing like reading aloud, it the only ha- when it, the only time it happens as an adult is in AA. Mm. And a lot of people, unfortunately, what's well, not fortunately in the AA community are not the top tier performers in school yep is that a fair way to say that sure yeah but it's a true it's true so and you're like you can pass in yeah. essence if it, you're a paragraph and you get but you like re- reading aloud it to a group as an adult is terrifying yeah i mean to your point when else do you have to do that the only yeah, time would be numbers. maybe like work presentations maybe that's it yeah, but you could do yeah work presentations i guess yeah but i like lydia got like a 13 a nine and a six. And like, it, it took me like a second. 13 plus nine plus six. So 13 plus nine is going to be 22. Yep. Plus six is going to be 28. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it was, there's a lot of people there. There was TVs. Pressure. A lot of distractions. Yep. I'm on a date. Yep. I'm like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you are somebody who drinks too. <sighs> yeah. Like oh, now, and drinking, now you have a couple dude, of drinks And drinking. You. And you're trying to be, yeah, that's a lot. But you can, I think if you are drinking, there's a kind of a, let's just, let's not keep score. <laughs> that's what I would do. That's what I would do. Yeah. Let's not keep let's score. Let's just have fun. We did go to, uh, they don't have, um, they don't have food there, mm-hmm. so you can bring in food. Right, it's just like an arcade, but like so. The, their big thing is you can bring in takeout from elsewhere. Yep. So we went. So we went to ML Rose to get a, a wings, and then it asked. We we ordered online, and mm-hmm. then it asked for a tip. <laughs> Which and she's doing it, and looks over at me, and I go, no. She goes zero. I go, yeah, no, 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 no money. <laughs> and by the way, we we Uber Eats t- Taco Bell on the bus like two nights before, and this girl was waiting in the Taco Bell thing for I think an hour. Yeah, and we tipped her like a hundred bucks. Great. So we do we we we're not and so I she looks at me and it's like I go no she goes all right you're going in to get it then fair very <laughs> I was fair like, she's like I'm waiting outside. Can they see the the tip before you pick it up? I don't know. That's the that's the thing that we that's always want to know. Yeah, because it and and also the guy is like is is there someone at a restaurant like in charge of takeouts or is it just kind of who's ever going around right you know yeah yeah because like, if they if they can see the tip before you pick it up then it's like they can mess with your food then too but the cook wouldn't there's no way the cook the cook just gets the line sheet that's right? true right yeah. of the items to make and he puts them in the thing right. so is a person you're telling me a human being is looking at it seeing how much and deciding how fast or slow to put it in a box interesting i mean right yeah i saw somebody uh somebody reply it was either a comment or an email but they said uh it depends like ask who's getting the tip so like at like Ooh, like your yeah. food truck example oh, the other about, day. Yeah, they, yeah yeah like <clears throat> ask does the tip go to you or does yeah. it go to the company who's it go to because i'll tip you oh you should ask that's a great idea Isn't that good? Ask, well so we what happens is we went to get the wings perfect example and the guy he goes yo john christ i go he goes I saw your name on the on the thing, and I was like, "We." He showed me a photo from his Snapchat from 2016 that we t- had taken together. Oh wow! He goes, "I saw your," th-, and I was like, "There's no way it's John Christ." That's awesome. And then I was, then, then I tipped him twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> because you know ego. Because well, I, then I was like, "Well, now I got to tip him now because yeah. now he's because <laughs> then I tipped zero planning to cash tip." There you go. But that guy took the that. That kid took the the money from me and put it in his pocket. Great. So I go, all right, that's a hundred percent. I'm into that. Is his? Yeah, that's a hundred percent. That's I'm into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like the ask who it goes to. Ask who does the tip go to? Do you get this tip or does it Ooh. go to some like, magical like a, cloud? You got like a twenty dollar bill on like a fishing line, and you're like, who does it go to? Yeah, like go you're on. like, is it mine? It's yours, yours. Yeah. Gonna have to be quicker than if that. it goes. <laughs> that's brutal. I might try that uh amazing episode today bro yeah dude unbelievable episode Good uh yeah we haven't we we didn't we weren't uh unrelated but we couldn't sleep last night 
uh, me and Alex, I'll just say. Mm-hmm. Which cameras, which do I look in if I need to make an official statement? That one. Um, I don't want to bring this up this early, and nor do I want to get into controversy. Mm-hmm. Do you? I do not want to get into controversy. I don't want to, but it, sometimes allegations mm. are being spread, mm-hmm. and rumors are spread. And we, I probably got this DM to me um, no less than 100 times mm. in the last 24 hours. <sighs> Hasbullah. Yeah. Has been arrested. Yeah. Moment of silence. You really all the uh, you know our haters, they they feel great. They're coming out in they droves. They feel great right yep. today. When you're proving your, they think they're proving themselves right. They think. Yeah. They want a battle. This is not the end of the war. Absolutely. Hezbollah is alive and well. And first of all, you're like, what? Did he do something terrible? No. Okay. There was um sounds like there was some street racing going on in in his home in his hometown. Yeah, they were uh one of his buddies got married in Dagestan. So they were celebrating. Okay. And to celebrate, they uh they took their cars. Yeah. And they just went and they they were just doing donuts on the freeway. They're doing donuts on the freeway. Just, who hasn't? Also, who hasn't? Number one, was Hasbulla driving? No. No, he doesn't drive. No. Hasbulla was a passenger. Yeah. And also, here's my innocent thought. bystander, really. Very innocent bystander. And we we me and Alex texted last night. I was like, "What do you, how do you feel about Hasbulla?" And I go, "I'm doubling down." Yeah. And he goes, "Me too." Yep. And here's my thing. Do you a lot of people on this podcast, very Christian people, mm. right? Mm-hmm. A major- I would say, I wouldn't say majority of them. I would say a lot of. There's a lot of very Christian people, mm-hmm. and you know what the and you know what Christians support? What marriage? Mm. We do. We do. And you know who else does? Who's that? Hassel. <laughs> 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 what an angle! <laughs> yes, I came up with that. I just came up with that, bro. Live, Hasbulla supports marriage. What are you anti marriage? The sanctity of marriage. Yeah. Are you? Yeah, the sanctity. Are you anti marriage? If okay. you're if you're anti Hasbulla, you're anti marriage. You really are. And you know what? Can you sell? Ce- what can you celebrate more than the unity of your friends? Right. It's spending their lives together in the way according to the Bible. It's beautiful in the biblical. I, I hope it's a guy and a girl. <laughs> if not, <laughs> this whole narrative is trashed. If it's not, <laughs> doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. All right. Yeah. Hasbulla is celebrating his friends, and then there's a lot of uh, free Hasbulla content. Yeah. He made a he made a statement on his IG. He said we decided to hype a little bit. That won't happen again. People, we apologize. We had to answer for it a little bit. I wasn't driving either. There you go. I wasn't driving either. There you go. I saw some comments on the Instagram once said, trade Brittany Griner for Haswell. <laughs> I don't know if she's still on the market. Yeah, I, don't I think she's back. Yeah, I think she's and signed so, already. And somebody said, I heard he was handcuffed with Twizzlers. <laughs> Why Twizzlers? That's not necessary. They just put his hand in two donuts. <laughs> somebody <laughs> said... Actually, somebody said, Is it because he wasn't in a car seat? <laughs> Last one I read. Imagine having to give your commissary to asshole. <laughs> I'm crying, dude. I'm literally crying. Oh, gosh. Haspel is going to be fine. Hey, I'm bumping the road. Free Bula. He's out here, and everybody's coming after us. Oh, John and Alex, what is it like to have to be proven wrong? We're not proven wrong. No, dude. Okay? Everybody makes mistakes. This is this is on track with what we ha- we decided he, who he was. Yeah. As well as our guy. He was celebrating his friends. Yeah, celebrating his friends. Uh, speaking of, one more thing before we get into the episode. Yeah. This, we are announcing on Thursday, the day this pod comes out, my, let's see, one, two, third comedy special. Let's Big. freaking go, Big, baby. Dude. Hour number three is out. Quick coming turnaround straight too. to Quick. the YouTubes, baby. Coming straight. John Christ. You know what it's called? What? It's called John Christ would like to release a statement. Oh, I'm curious. All yeah, right. Yeah, you should be, baby. Yeah, it's going to be fire, dude. It's coming right to YouTube. Uh, we turned down a couple offers some from some big uh, streaming services. Okay. Nah, yeah. Legally, I can't really say. But I feel like I should say congrats to that too. That's oh yeah, a big, yeah, it's big. That's a big yeah, it's thing. big. Yeah, and the last one was so big and so uh, so successful for us. We're up like up like seventy five million uh, views cumulatively. YouTube's the, the mood, the move, man. Everybody, that's because we're like it's the easiest way to share, and mm-hmm. we want people to come to the live show. Yeah, we want people if they like the videos, they'll come to the live show, and that's the whole model for us doing business. I love it. And the, the last one was so big, and they were like, dude. If you're like, dude, I'm obsessed with this special. It sounds incredible, dude. It's on Paramount Plus. You're like, well, not getting it. 
<laughs> no disrespect. Yeah. Not no. Uh, it's on. Not well. Not gonna see it. Did you uh, did you do anything different with this special from past specials? Uh, yeah. I mean, I I like dressed how I wanted and like shot it how I, I'll tell you this. Um, they were so we shot the special in Dallas. Um, and then immediately, um, my I was edit. I was I got the raw footage back, and it was like an hour. What the thirty, and we got to cut it down to fifty five minutes or something. And I go. I, I messaged my agent. I never forget this. I go, who are we editing this for? Mm. Meaning like, it's a lot of great content. I go, if we're going to Netflix, I would edit it different than if we were going to like the Daily Wire. Because mm -hmm. they have some comedy specials. Yeah. Adam Carolla did one over there. TJ Miller did one over there. And of course, Netflix. And we're like, I go, who are we editing this for? Ba like what platform? And my, my agent love him he just texted me back he goes dude edit it how you want it and then we'll figure out what to do with it nice which i was like oh so i like the stuff i don't like get rid of the yeah. stuff that i like keep it in i was eating i talked about being canceled in there a little bit and like talked about that and it was like dude you you edit it how you like it and then we'll figure it out so you yeah your fingerprints are all over this all thing. and the last the, awesome. our last special which I, went, I should find a clip of that i think i can go find a clip of that we had to, we had the a joke about praying for the Goldsteins. The Goldsteins were rich and it was like anti, they said it was the last streamer that I'm not legally allowed to say. And they, they he's like, can you change that last name? It's anti-Semitic. Like of all the stuff in there, that's the least, meaning like they're like, yeah, if they're yeah, paying yeah. for it, they're like, hey. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's going to happen with every, uh, that is happening with everything. Yeah. But so, not this though. Yeah. So straight to YouTube. Yeah. yeah. And uh, like it, stream it, share it. You'll see a bunch of previews and stuff on my socials coming up. It's coming out May 23rd baby amazing dude hot episode today it's a good one man oh man we have i was gonna announce it but then it's already on the thing yeah they've already read the title they already <laughs> yeah, saw the they're thumbnail. like hey they're they're clicked like, on it hey yeah. we wanted this 15 minutes ago yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. sorry <laughs> where are the timestamps? can we skip michael ahead? w yeah. smith is in the studio baby good uh i like how we have so many good like changes of pace on this oh, in terms yeah, of like conversation dude. this is to go from matt rife to michael w smith is is a spectrum range no and no no shade on matt rife no, it's they're, different they're different not, ends of the spectrum yeah different ends of this and i don't know what spectrum and i don't know what side you want to be on no me yeah. neither but i'm, I'm on saying, it yeah i'm on it somewhere <laughs> unbelievable conversation we talked a lot I, one of my favorite parts of that conversation was about the uh that billy graham oh yeah. remember that yeah about that billy graham crusade with eighty thousand people and the amount of time that he was able to spend with him towards the back end of his life incredible like just so special that but that's like i mean he's he's he was his times taylor swift yeah <laughs> I, don't <laughs> I don't think it's a little different yeah. but eighty thousand people is so many yeah it's just so many people because like uh you know how nate bargatze got the record at uh, bridgestone yep because of the way it's seated mm -hmm. so it's he did it in the round so you're not cutting off any seats so when i went to those the it, the whole the whole ground was empty Mm. And like you could see, it's all seated, and mm -hmm. then you can see. That's why you can't. Otherwise, you can't even fit that many people in, into a football stadium. Yeah, no, I think Taylor did twenty k, or I'm sorry, sixty k a night at uh sixty k a night. On, so yeah, eighty is right. yeah twenty more than that. That's so big. So that's, maybe that's Nissan plus Bridgestone at one night. In and one he night. did like he did like three of them a weekend. Oh my goodness, man! But it was unbelievable to hear from him and what he what he is what uh, it was it was so it was like so encouraging. I thought I I told uh, Lydia this. I f I feel like it was like the it was like the words of my father sometimes mm. in that conversation. Yeah, speaking to me. A lot know? of wisdom. A lot of wisdom. A lot of encouragement. And you'll be you'll be. Um, I mean, I already know the emails that are going to come from this are going to be yeah yeah. And I tried to get in some jokes. You got Did some. I? You definitely. I definitely. slid some in. Yeah, for sure. And he was he thought it was funny. He got some jokes in there too. Yeah, because that was I'm always like, what's well, it's a comedy podcast. Yeah. Yeah. But we always, but the, the unbelievable conversation, man. I really, really enjoyed it and, and, and grateful uh, for Michael to come by. It was very, very, uh, it was like almost like, uh, yeah, someone in my family mm -hmm. sitting down and, 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 and encouraging us for an hour. Yeah, the stories of him, to, uh, like just talking about playing uh, internationally too Incredible. for audiences that don't even speak English, like so cool. Beautiful to see. It was awesome to see, man. Uh, Y'all enjoy this episode. Uh, here's Michael W. <laughs> How long you been in this spot? 
Uh, cool. About a year, year and a half, year plus. Yeah. Man, I hadn't been. I, I never come to Nashville. Hardly. Oh, you don't. But I pass a place called. We're on Fog Street, right? Yeah. So before Rocket Town happened. Oh yeah, Rocket Town's right down here. Yeah, too. Trent Dean, who used to work at Rocket Town, had a place called Fog Station. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, then that was yeah. What happened? Did you own Rocket Town? I just started. You I just started it. it. It's a five hundred one. It's a nonprofit. Yeah, yeah. And was is there skating still in there too, or no? There is. I've been in a bunch. Have you been to Rocket Town? It's a big place. So you just what was it? A warehouse? It was a well. This place was a engine repair shop. Yeah, massive. Yeah. That's like a, like a, what was Nash what was Nashville what was downtown Nashville like back then? It was a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> there was, hey, so you're what you're saying is Jason Aldean's wasn't down there? No, no, no. 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 Have you ever been to Broadway? I was down like there. Like the bars the last on Broadway. Was, the last time I was down there, I is this Mike okay at that 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 far away? The last time I was down there, I was down there for for Bono when he came and did his show at the Ryman. So I had I was there. When was that? Day. Uh, eight months ago, seven months ago. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But man, I was like, I mean, there's this is five o'clock in the day and it's, and it's packed. It's not, it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's like that, I hear it's that way all the time. Well, what was it? What was what was Broadway like in the eighties? It was, it was definitely not as much traffic. <laughs> was it? I mean, all I know, it was probably the same street. It was street. just some honky talk. It's talks. the same it's street. Yeah, it was just yeah. honky talk. Okay. Yeah, there was no big, you know, all these like line stuff. dancing. Or like they would just but play they music. Might have, eh, maybe I don't know. Probably not back in the day. And now it's like a destination. It's a destination. I think it became that, but because I, I mean, <clears throat> I moved here in two thousand eighteen, and I don't think Broadway wasn't really cool. But then the pandemic happened. Remember that? And then it somehow stayed open. Yeah. And then everyone was seeing videos of Broadway. Yeah. Packed, <clears throat> and everybody goes, "We're going there." And then more money came in here, and then. It became better. Now everybody's building the bar down there. Who's building the bar down there? Luke Combs, Eric Church, Garth Brooks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. The you know Luke, what the we Luke need? Combs one is going to be. You huge. know what we need? <laughs> ain't going to happen. Yeah, 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 dude. <laughs> I go to shit, dude. I would go to Michael W. Yeah, Smith for bar. sure. <laughs> what would be in there downtown on Broadway? Michael W. Smith. What would be the draw? What's Ooh, unique about I the Michael W. No Smith idea. bar? <laughs> would be wild, word. dude. Yeah. Well, that's like a um, I. Would you feel like if there was a president, if we had to elect a president of evangelical Christianity, you'd be on the ballot? Uh, I don't think so. You don't think? Who would be the the president? You, Toby? Because mm -hmm. Billy Graham, it would have been Billy Graham, but he's passed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you're yeah, but you're just picking people from our genre. Is that what? Yeah, no, evangelical, <laughs> evangelical. Oh, yeah, because oh. there would be big Catholics. Who's the president of Catholicism in the States? Isn't there a... In the States? Caviezel. Yeah, yeah, maybe he'd be a... <laughs> Jer Jer uh, Jonathan Rumi, both those guys. I, I'm, I'm friends with both Jesus. How about that? Uh, those are both the guys that played I'll, Jesus yeah, in... Uh, I, I love John. Oh, I love nice. both Jim in them In the movies. Nice. Yeah. Well, isn't it... Does Christian... If you're going to act in a Christian movie, you have to be Christian, kind of. Right? Not necessarily. Well, because we saw each other at that premiere... For, with Jesus Revolution, yeah, which is unbelievable, by the way. Yeah, but yeah. you're kind of going to be the spokesperson of the movie. Don't wouldn't you have to be like uh, what's his name? Who's the older guy? He's Christian, the older pastor. Oh yeah, when you Chuck Chuck Smith. Yeah, who's he acted by? Um, uh, what's his name? Chuck Smith in the Jesus Revolution. No, 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 he, he, He's famous. Very. Yeah, famous. he was. In, yeah, gosh. Uh, Kelsey Kramer. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's a believer. Well, yeah, I think he, as of lately, I think he had, by what I can tell yeah. in his interviews, he's definitely had a conversion. I wonder if they have like the auditions and you kind of ask them like, hey. I have no idea. Because I would say the, if you're like a backup, like an extra, you don't have to be Christian. But I think the main people are Christian in all the Christian movies, right? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not I don't see all the Christian movies. No. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm not convinced all of them are, but I think, <laughs> you know, but, you know, I think some people who have been in some of those movies, especially the good ones, have been probably impacted by the script mm -hmm. and who's, mm -hmm. who were the cast, who was the director, and yeah. they were profoundly 
changed, you know, by being a part of that process. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's what some some people the people had said yeah. in the. Uh, well, it's funny because, like, let's say we always have had this conversation before. Like, if you're, like, the moral code, unspoken moral code of like a church. So the pastor has to be on the straight and narrow. The worship leader. You can probably maybe have a beer every now and then, but on the, you got to go to the other side of town. But then you get all the way down to like the guy that cuts the grass. Like if he's getting a check from the church, what is his, what are his rules? You don't know. <laughs> you never thought about that? I have thought about it. I think it's all twisted in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Um... Yeah. Well, the I think. Do you think a lot of like I th feel like I went to your show. I don't know if you probably remember this. You, I, we didn't know each other, but at the it, I want to say two thousand fifteen at the World Arena in Colorado Springs. Okay. Would that be a, would that probably. timeline make yeah, sense? Yeah. And it was very my. I mean, obviously we've grown up listening to your music and still do, but the um my uncle. Had, had was going through cancer treatment uh healing rain is that the song mm -hmm. yeah that what it's called mm -hmm. was just shared just throughout our we just played it all the time mm -hmm. did you write that or no i did i co-wrote it yes gosh dude that don't listen to that if you're in public it'll take you to a different place bro yes nice. it'll take you to a different room. but and that experience in there because i've seen photos of you leading worship all over the world right yeah and like different what is that like it's incredible is it yeah yeah Gosh. especially uh yeah being outside of america and again i have to be make sure i'm not critical because we're saturated and we're yeah and you know you go to an eastern block i just got back from romania and poland and budapest Le doing your music doing my music and knowing what they've been through and yeah. they were communist rule for so long and then it's a whole different deal man it's a whole different like they're more uh they are like eager they're all in 110 percent. and these are like yeah these are like these are like arenas and like just yeah my 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 sound engineer sent an email back going can we just tour in, in europe for the rest oh just stay over there for the rest for the next three years <laughs> yeah yeah you're like hey, you're, well, you, you, are you, do you mean evansville indiana's not uh <laughs> well, circled on your we can, we can, we can, no we disrespect can, we, to evansville we can probably fit it in, yeah so. i think yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think i'm coming to evansville in the fall yeah uh, so these so these people are are uh they're hungry yeah they're hungry and they're just they're just like it's like it's like something that it's it's different than it is in the south because we're this like it's, it's christian by default around here even we're, if you're not a believer you're kind of we're in a bubble yeah yeah and you're like uh there's just a lot of it's a you, you turn on the radio there's no christian radio over there would there be no not really is there no. radio i'm just kidding that was <laughs> yeah there's radio and how do they find out about you good question you know yeah. um you know, I'm sure that I mean the, a lot of the churches are strong, and you know the music is. Such is it a huge... legal there? It is. Say again? Christianity is legal there. Oh yeah, like some places it's illegal, right? Well, yeah, it's like you know, I just went to Vietnam, and it's a communist country. You know, and gosh, I'm, and dude. I'm, I'm, I'm playing music in Vietnam. At, at like where? In an outdoor field, there's twenty two thousand people. You know, oh, my. but it's a communist country, so it's yeah. like, I mean, I think. You know, if you went in there and, and stirred it up big time, you I know, would say twenty two thousand people in a field is stirring it up big time. <laughs> well, we might have stirred it up. You might have come in peace. We come in yes. peace. Yeah, and I think you know, I think they would still welcome me, welcome yeah. me back in. So who knows? But. I mean, and there's like the uh, Morgan Wallen. He comes out. He comes out on a, at the beginning of his show with just a piano. Yeah, and I've always. I feel like that's a lost art because you do that. Do yeah. you do that? I'm, I'm getting parts ready, of the show. I'm getting ready to start a tour, and I'm going to open up the show just me on the piano. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I'm telling you. It's interesting you said that. It's yeah. really funny. Yeah. Well, we talked yesterday on the podcast about this box. Like boxers come out to these big hype songs and these big like yeah. these huge intros. Let's get ready to rumble. And like boxer two weekends ago on Showtime came out to Oceans. 
Really? And it was like. That's awesome. Yeah, it's such a different, like you want to lead all the way up and there's something about a performer coming out. I think his his piano just comes up from the uh, the orchestra pit and he's yeah. and everybody's. That's how you're going to start? I don't know if I'll be coming out of the pit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, let me think. What, what there's always I, like. I, did, I mean, I, yeah, I used to do that. I mean, I did, it never came out of the pit. Yeah, I think it actually did come out of the pit. Back, back in the day, like like the I'll Lead You Home tour, you know, I would yeah. do it in the middle of the show. Inter <laughs> interesting on, on all those big shows. And I think about I'll Lead You Home. And that's when I think Jars of Clay was out with me. But it was a yep. massive production. So it was Changing World Go S. And then in the middle of the show, I would just, this piano would come out in the middle, in the middle of the arena. And I would just play. And we had all the stuff, you know. So you ask people what they love the most, going, oh, they're going to love Cross Gold. They're going to love all this. Oh, yeah. And everybody yeah. went, my favorite part of the show was when you were all by yourself on the piano. Gosh, that's where you connect them. Yeah, because I, I feel don't, don't I have they, all these. We get all the flash stuff all yeah, the time. All the stuff, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. It's, they just want to hear. Show, showbiz. And it's human. It's like uh, I have a part in my show where we the show's two plus hours. And like for, I want to say maybe 90 seconds, I go, hey, listen, we're all having a good time here tonight. But uh, I know a lot of y'all struggle with depression and, and, uh, and I, let me just say that I've been there myself and laughter is a good medicine. And I've been laying on a bed in rehab and, and, and there's a lot of people that love me and care for me. And all I just wanted to know was that I'm not alone. And we're in, I keep coming back to Evansville because I go, but we're in Evansville and a lot of people think you're alone, but there's a, there's a God that loves you and cares about you and wants the best for you. And everybody yeah. in the comments goes, that was, I was like, what about the joke I wrote about? They're like, right. ah. It was about that moment. Whatever that was, yeah. <laughs> and I feel like the people in Vietnam, there's 22,000 people in there, whatever, but they, there, there is that. There's a connection. There's something. Yeah. And, and Christian, and that, yeah. And, and Christian I, and music was, is even bigger. It's the music in general. I just, I've said it so many times. I mean, I think it's the most powerful universal language in the world and how a three and a half minute song can completely radically changed somebody's life three and a half minutes true i mean i've been yeah everybody's everybody's gone to one when they were younger they were like this i mean i went to we're playing the fox theater in in atlanta and i my first comedy show or my, my first show was dc talk wow at, at the, the fox, fox theater because yeah. i grew up in atlanta yeah and i remember being like i had listened to that cd and i knew all those songs and like my brothers or whoever was in the group was kind of like, I was like, whatever, I don't care about y'all. I'm, I didn't care about fitting in with them or the music was so captivating. And I think I've been, I've been doing that ever since, going to see music ever since. Yeah. And I said, we talked with uh, like uh, Corey Asbury was in here mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. And I talked about going to a, a Coldplay concert. And now it wasn't Christian, but I did feel something, mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Uh, what do you even call that? Warmth or love or purpose or I was in it. I was like, and I related to it. I don't even know what it was. It just music is, yeah, universal. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Well, t I mean, and especially because you go, because like, we tour. If I tour in, in Canada, I go, hey, does ever, do they know like about the stuff we joke about? Or like if I went to Budapest, I would go, I don't think these people know about a McDonald's drive through But they go, yeah, they know. They know all the stuff. So you never been worried about that? That the people were not going to connect with it? Um, maybe back in the day, you know, back in the early part of it. But, but my last 10, 15 years of being there, I don't ever worry about that. Well, as 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 you has it become less of a less of a concert and more of like a worship experience as you gotten older? Because your the early albums were more yeah, and I pop. still and I still do those songs too. I still sing yeah, Place in This World. Dude, we gotta get one. When well, you ever brought us, you, you're going to Vietnam. You never thought to call me and we go. Hey, <laughs> I will come, next time. Who goes out with you? How many? How many? Just my band. I just I've got yeah four guys and yeah we just. Make it happen. So. Gosh. Well, is there any, like... Um, There's a lot of McDonald's, by the way, in Europe. There so, is. Yeah. So it, your joke's good, maybe works. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, is is and they're not they're not drive through. Yeah, they're not. They're yeah. very oh, they're like they're a, sophisticated, yeah. and very modern. You're ordering on a screen, and the, the best, yeah. the like most well to do people work there. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The McDonald's in in the Morocco where I went was five yeah. star. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty. It's a whole different deal. Support for Net Positive is brought to you by Manscaped. But hey, they've been with us since day one. Yeah, man. Since day not since day one, but since the day one of ads. Yeah, since ad day one. They've been up here up top. And you know what they have been us doing for us? What's Sending that? us product. Mm-hmm. And I got it. And you got it. There's a, used to be a lot of things in my uh drawers in my uh in my bathroom. Now there's only two. Face and then full body. That's right. Scape yourself up, baby. The performance package 4.0 has arrived. And oh man, it's a game changer. Inside this package, the lawnmower 4.0. Is that what you have? Yep. The face I got the face trimmer and then the lawnmower 4.0. Mm-hmm. Because you know where I'm going this week? Where? Vacation, bro. Mm. That's the time. Yep. This is the manscape time. Will you scape up before you go or will you take it with you? Let me see. Will I go? I'll t- I got to do it here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got to do it at the house. Yep. I got a little bit of a trim. I'm going to be shirtless in front of my family. There you go. Yeah. Now's you gotta, the time. You got to scape up. Scape and, it up. And also, secondarily, I'm go- I'm just going to go say this. I would appreciate if the other people in my family were the same. Scape the up. other men in my family. I don't want to come on, man. Maybe bring it with you. You can all scape up. Nah, today. okay, that's, that's too much. Mine. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll bring in the I'll bring the promo code. There you go. Okay. Yeah. This thing will take care of you. Uh the manscaped the, the, the groomer has a uh I'm not even reading the copy. I'll just speak from my own experience. Yep. It's got the light on it mm-hmm. and it'll go anywhere. Yep. Batteries, and you can do it at any kind of uh setting or anything. Yeah, it's light- waterproof as well. Is it? Yep. Dang. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, this is changes. The lawnmower for 4.0 is waterproof and it also is. has a 4,000K LED spotlight for your a more precision. Yeah, you, shape. maybe yeah, I should yeah, stick to the copy because yeah. I'm like, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. right there. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I'll dude. bring to bring. I'll bring six of them for all my brothers. There you go. Yeah, scape it up, baby. You thought this was good? Yeah, take your grooming, take your grooming game even further. Performance package 4.0 includes the weed whacker nose and ear trimmer. Clutch. Yeah, you got it all. Super clutch. You got one. Yeah, take it all with you. Uh, get 20% off and free shipping with code net positive at manscaped.com. That is 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code net positive. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Has the movement of like, um, like deconstruction happened overseas with Christianity or is that here only? I just sense it here. You do? Yeah. It could be in other countries, but but as far as I know, I'm sure there's, I mean, I've really never liked that word, whatever. But yeah. I don't like it either. Yeah. You know, I think it's whatever okay. that is, the unrest of, of the un. Well, I think it's okay to wrestle with, if you were raised a certain way and, you, yeah. and you've got to own it and maybe you were forced. Yeah. It was forced upon you by your parents right. or yeah. your, whatever, you know? Yeah. But I think everybody wrestles with, at some point, your spirituality and going, mm-hmm. gosh, is this true? Is it not true? You know, but I think once you truly have an encounter with Jesus, it's a game changer. So, I wonder, like a lot of the stuff, because if, if I was born in 1984, so a lot of the stuff in the 80s and 90s, like we do that revisionist history with like like Christopher Columbus. We're like, well, yeah. he should have. And now he's like canceled because or like, yeah, well, back then it wasn't the value system we have now. Yeah. So like a, we look at Christianity, the 80s, 90s and now, and there's no one better that has experienced the whole spectrum of that than you. And there's, there's a lot of like weird stuff going on. Yeah. It, like in the like, yeah. And your conversion experience was. You were like, you had a religious experience at like 10 or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. With, what was that? I mean, it was real. I mean, it it was crazy. I mean, it was, I'll never forget it. And then, you know, I was, I'd written books about it. did the, walked away from God for four years and yeah. became a prodigal and I was a mess. And, at what age? Uh, uh, 17 to 21. Yeah. All right. And I moved yeah. to Nashville in the middle of all that. And so I was, I hit rock bottom. That it was yeah. Nashville, dude. <laughs> Same thing happened to me. Same thing happened to me. Rock I moved to Nashville. Yeah, you started going out on Broadway. Started going to Kid Rock. I was on Music Row. Yeah, but I don't yeah, know if yeah. I was on Broadway, but yeah, I was on Music yeah, Row, yeah. doing and making a lot of bad choices. Yeah, yeah. And that, and but it wasn't because you didn't have a you didn't know the Lord because you did. 
I just got deceived. I thought I could play with the fire and not get burned. Yeah. 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 And then, well, I think a lot of people that are kind of our, our age or they, they kind of look back at a lot of the things. There's a lot of good that has come from our faith and the way we're brought up. But there's a lot of like, you look back and like, man, when we went to like, I remember going to a youth group and then we had to like confess every time we looked at porn or it was, it was very, the youth pastors were like, we thought these people were like spiritual guides, but they were kind of, it was just all very, there's a lot of humans involved yeah. the whole time. Yeah. And so you look back at that and you go, oh, I'm, I'm, maybe a lot of people my age just wish, yeah, deconstruction is maybe a bad word, but, but just wish all those youth pastors or pastors or whoever that kind of led, they were like, they just want them to be like, hey, my bad. We yeah. were trying our best too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. We're broken people. They yeah. Got, they got some of it right and they didn't get some of it right. <laughs> really? I mean, that might be the easiest way to, that might be the easiest way to, to think about it. Right. Yeah. And I just think then you got to go and, you know, people have been hurt by the church and you know, all this stuff. Yeah. And, and then doing things that are ungodly that are, they're saying this is the right thing, to, all right. that kind of stuff, you know, just the deception and stuff. So then I yeah. think eventually you just, and you, you know what? And a lot of people need to be, get healed. A lot of but people probably do need some therapy, but I mean, yeah. they, they need spiritual therapy. Yeah, right. And then ultimately you just go back, oh, let's just go back and see what the book says. What's the book say? Well, that I, yeah, I think I'm, everybody becomes a certain age, right? So if I go, I'm going to, I'm 17 and my parents said, I got to be at home by 11. So I'm going to sneak out and go smoke a cigarette. Cause I'm going to show that. Right. Yeah. But th when you're 17, yeah. you go, okay. But now I look around at everybody kind of in our, I was like, dude, we're, we're like in our like thirties. Like if you're still carrying, you know what I'm saying? Some yeah. wound or some hurt like that, that it just seems like if like, if you grew up very strict, like we, uh, my family was like Mennonite, almost like Amish, where like yeah. there was no television in the house, yeah. right? No, nothing. And then if you go, I'm going to double down on this and pass this along to my children, or I'm going to swing the other way and mm -hmm. be why, like, either way, you're, you just still haven't come to grips with the wounds that you got as a child. And then you're at now behaving like that as an adult. And you just go your whole adult life like that. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, not free? Yeah. You're not free. You're just you're, right. you're just you're just. Gosh, what a way to live! I, mm -hmm. I would never want to be caught up in that scenario. And yeah, so yeah, and then you know what? Bitterness is a killer. Bitterness is a killer. And so, yeah. uh, got to learn how to forgive, move forward, and extend mercy to people who hurt you and. And and I know that's and it's interesting because it's such a mystery because it's a lot easier for some people and for some people not. Yeah. And yeah. you're trying to figure out the mystery of all that. Right. But ultimately, I just think you got to go back to the source. Yeah. And uh, and if you need some help along the way, there's a lot of people out there that can help they define can help a lot yeah. of that. Yeah. And help you get whole and be able to live an amazing life that yeah. you're truly free. I think we all want freedom. That's what so, I think everybody, yeah. yeah, you want, you want to be, whether you're on the, the right or the left or Republican or Democrat or evangelical or Catholic. We went to a church in Asheville, North Carolina, and I go, I go, the people are, these people are, this is in the middle of nowhere because we go to a lot of different churches when we're on the road. Mm -hmm. Like we went to a cowboy church. We just wanted to see what it was like in there, yeah. right? And then we also went to a church that is very, there was very, like Lutheran is very rigid and very, and I go, the thing about everybody that's coming to these is these people, these families are, marriages are in trouble. There's addiction in the family. There's kids that are making all kinds of choices. There's people struggling with their jobs. There's people struggling mm -hmm. with their health and they're getting up on Sunday morning and getting dressed and they're coming to this building, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For, Help, not yeah. hospital. Really, they're, that's what they're coming yeah. for. Yeah. And and I think 
the church in some ways with with the just like all the lights and the flashes and the stuff at your show they're gonna love the they're gonna love the lights and they're gonna love the like what what they really liked is you sitting there on the piano going hey i love y'all and there's a god that cares for you yeah and that's i feel like what the church that you can get all that stuff everywhere else yeah. you get a free cookie when at at tgi fridays <laughs> right that's what they're giving yet yeah, churches and they are like man these people are dying because yeah. i've been dying and they're coming in there for a respite from the pain right. of life and i feel like that sometimes the church does people a disservice and they don't they don't help i totally agree yeah gosh yeah. were you raised in a christian household i was you were what was the the experience at 10 that really like made that drastic well, change? Well, my mom and dad changed my life because they were they were amazing. Christian and, or no? Oh, they yeah, were. big time. Mom yeah. was church secretary. My dad was an oil oil refinery worker, and and they just loved me my whole life. And that's why I wrote that book. My the last book I wrote was The Way of the Father. It's really all about my dad. Yeah, showing me kind of what God was like. But he never, even when I went through my drug phase, he just, you know, I just remember, I think the only time he ever got, we really wasn't upset. I remember we were sitting on the front porch and he just said, son, we're, you're going to have to stop. You're going to have to pull it together. Yeah, you know, I've heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> and I, 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 I remember a couple of conversations. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you got to pull it together. Son, but I never yeah. got kicked out of the house and I never, yeah. it was always, they were, they rooted for me my whole life. And so. I mean, I think that's the way. I think that's what the way God is, and people have a misconception yeah. of who God is because they think if you screw up, you know, all of a sudden he's got the rod and it's yeah. you're in deep trouble, and it, yeah, it's all that kind of stuff. So, um, it was a healthy. I mean, there was maybe a few rules, but, but for the most part, it it was healthy all the way. My dad coached me in baseball, and yeah. I moved to Nashville. He just thought I was the greatest, and just it was it was it was edification, edify, edify both my mom and my dad encouragement love the yeah. whole way and drug drugs are probably different back then there's drugs no molly were, back then yeah yeah there's no fentanyl back then no fentanyl yeah nothing no just whatever you could you got to go to a gas station and ask a guy named reggie behind the dumpster <laughs> <laughs> reggie <laughs> or, I, love or, yeah, so, or, I know I reggie yeah you get drugs in the <laughs> 80s was different than getting, dr than getting them out oh yeah. gosh Funny. well that's what we talked about this before, but when I was like, like, so I was, I was making jokes and my, you know, my dad was a pre pastor. I grew up in church, right? Yeah. I was making all these jokes and this, these, this Christian community kind of like put me up. Like we, st I, st like I was doing open mics at bars for like a hundred bucks. And then these, the, the church down the street was like, come do it here for 500 bucks. And I was like, yeah, what? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that my it just kind of went in that direction. Yeah. Right? And then I remember just being like you know, I was drinking a bunch and making the gamut of bad choices on the road. And I remember every time I would see a line like a there was a line to get in my shows and it was like, "Dude, John, look at look at that. That's just sold out." And it would come with it was so much shame because mm. I thought if all these people knew that I was going to get drunk after this show, they would all hate me. They would all abandon me and they would all turn their backs on me. Mm. And, and I don't know what, I don't really know where I got that. I did get it from somewhere, the church or growing up or my youth pastor, or my parents, or, but that seemed like you, you were lost as well. And you, but you never felt like you were like, you ever feel that shame or that, Guilt? Oh yeah, I did. You did. Yeah, but I wasn't. You know, I wasn't performing and and yeah, also true. So, yeah. um, I mean, I was playing an after hours bar and playing in some bands. I played at the Commodore Lounge at the Holiday Inn in Vanderbilt. Wait, that's still there. Still there. You played there. 19, what year? Nineteen seventy-eight. Wow. So, I wonder what that was like. Yeah, crazy. That's why you're that cold place is still there. as ice. <laughs> oh yeah, really? Hot blooded. Sing all these crazy songs and oh man and that's when i think it was after the last show that i did in september of 78 i was playing with this band called rose all oh, this cover band yeah 
And then that's when I've written books about it, whatever. It's crazy. I, but I snorted something at a little after party at yeah. somebody's house and thought it was cocaine. It was something else. And Maybe there was fentanyl. And, uh, you know, my nose is bleeding from both sides and just you know, like, and they trying to clean me up. And then I thought I was going to die. Yeah. Literally thought. Yeah. And it took me two days to recover. And I knew, I knew that that was not my destiny. Right. And that right. there was a, God, you got to call my life and I'm trapped. I'm in a pit and I can't get out. I got nothing. I can't get out. My, I cannot get out. And, and if you kept die. going, you, you would die. What's that? You would die if you kept going. Yeah. You, so, yeah. So I just began to, oh, well, I never did that again, okay. you know, yeah. um, but I still was partying, you know, yeah. and. So that's why I prayed that God would God, do whatever you got to do. I mean, car wreck, break my legs, just don't kill me. Yeah, you know, if I stay alive. Say, just, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so what happened, he did, he did something totally out of nowhere. Yeah. I, I, I got, I became depressed. You did. And. You're still, were you still using then or no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I kept wrestling with it. And then it was November of 79 as I ended up on my kitchen floor in East Nashville. And nervous breakdown, three and a half hours convulsing and really crying and shaking. And, and I say this, and I know it's true. Uh, Ava came, we laid on the floor with me. And I haven't, and, cry, I, and I have not been the same since that night in 79. But I'm convinced it was the prayers of my mom and dad. Yeah. My mom and dad, they kept, they, they knew I was in trouble. They didn't know the extent yeah. of all the stuff I was doing. But yeah, I got up and it's like, wow, what, what, what happened last night? And it all changed. Well, I said, you, you remember the, the first time you ever texted me? I think I do, but I don't know what I said. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, it was the day I got canceled. Yes. Yeah. I do. And I didn't, I, all right. So like, and I, we had known of each other and you just said, Hey, I'll never forget this. I was in the, it was in like the darkest day of my life, obviously. And you're like, Hey, it's Michael W. Just want to let you know that we love you and we care for you and you're not alone. So I'm very simple like that. Yeah. And, and everybody that did kind of like, you wouldn't even had my number. So you, you, you saw what I was going through. I found your number and found, and, and you, <laughs> but you were so, you were so, <clears throat> I feel like everybody that reached out to me had also been in a similar position, maybe not publicly or maybe, but they been to the darkness. Right. And that what you're saying on that kitchen floor is the darkness mm -hmm. is, is I've, I always said, I looked the devil in the eye. I've looked him in the eye yeah. and everybody that had, you were so compelled. You saw, they go, I don't know him, but I need to reach out to him and offer him some kind of, I don't know him, but some kind yeah. of, help or some kind of because i think you go i know what that's like i know what that's like and it's horrific mm -hmm. and i feel like every everybody that reached out what had what was the same thing they go mm -hmm. dude i 15 years ago i cheated on my wife and lost my family or i got a dui with my kids in the car or i got fired from my job for embezzling but some some everybody right. had gone through something right. horrific yeah and they all were like kind of like <clears throat> reaching a hand out or something like that going out a lifeline because you bit. know yeah you know, you know what it feels like yeah. yes and i feel like yeah. we uh, now now i'm on this other side of that now yeah. so i've now gone through it and that we had like you know Sam Hunt, who was one of our buddies, that he he got a DUI and it was all in the news. Or uh, Jimmy Allen, who was all in the news a couple weeks ago, he's gone through a divorce, and and I have no idea what his. But I go, hey, dude, same thing. I go, hey, dude, I just want to let you know that we love you mm. and that you're not alone, and that and that's not letting anyone off the hook or supporting anyone's behavior, right? But you're just saying, like, if you if you were in that kitchen laying on the ground in the middle of whatever mess you'd made of your life, you knew that your parents would come at any time and help you. Absolutely. And that's what you were in essence offering people with their relationship with Christ. 
Absolutely. They say he'd, yeah, that's so, it's so, it's easy to say, but it's so hard to like, you're like, like people want to reject, people want to, they, they can't be, they can't, I can't be forgiven, right? Or people say, yeah, there's no, they, he doesn't know what I've done. And this, this gift of help or like extending a hand to, I got you, is not, you felt the presence of the Lord was with you on that kitchen floor. No doubt. And a lot of people have that story. Yeah. And when you go to Vietnam and you're up there playing on the, it, you're, 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 you get the emails of people that come to your shows just like we do that I, we were, man, that meant, I'm sure you probably disconnected from it a little bit because they can't get all the way to your mailbox. No, sure. but I still get it. I know. Yeah. What's going on. And what do they say? Lots of stuff. I mean, yeah. Um, you know, I'm alive today because of place in this world. Um, Gosh, you know. I mean, the list goes on. I mean, yeah, really, especially that song for some reason. And yeah, because I remember I got that letter from that girl because she said that she was, I'm alive today because of place in this world. Yeah. But it all stemmed, the, uh, this great story was, this girl was, she, she inspired, she, the girl inspired the story, a letter I got, she lived in Southern California, and she's like, she'd been abused, and just horrific life. And she yeah. just said, man, I'm just, and she finally said, I'm just trying to find my place in this world. That's what she said. And so that, that spurred the song. And then, yeah. then the, the, everybody started, you know, I was going to commit suicide, of, yeah. and heard your song. Da, 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 da. I heard your song, and right. and I still get it to this day. That song's when you what, what you dread that song. Thirty three years old. What's that? You gotta listen to that song on the way home. Place in this world with Michael Lewis Smith is unbelievable. Yeah, production's a little dated, <laughs> <laughs> but I still sing it. I yeah. actually still sing the song. But it it is creative. We the same with jokes or or, or the, I mean we've uh, all kind of sketches and like we have a bit about how. I have a bit in my show about Lazarus, about how if you think about the whole story of Lazarus from his perspective, like he lived in the Middle East, right? He was sick. He died. He's in heaven, glorified body. What's he finally getting his heavenly rewards for all the sacrifices he made on earth. And like the joke is like somebody knocked on his door. He's like, hey, <laughs> not yet. We got to send you back. And he's like, no. Yeah, like back to the Middle East with no air conditioning. He's like, ah. Like he, that with the joke is he sees Jesus walking over to his house. He's like, no right and a lot of people have said we're struggling with with the death of a family member or a loved one mm. and that bit a joke right You're, it's just a right. song it's just words pieced together right. with a melody it's like it, it 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 helped me or lifted my spirits right. or it or it it gave me some kind of hope in the midst of this and you and you've been to the darkness and i think no one with any kind of great story hasn't mm -hmm. and so you know do you feel a responsibility to go out and take the message that you have all across the world or it's a calling yeah you know it's my sweet spot just like you got yeah. your sweet spot you know yeah too much is given much is required and here you got what are you gonna do you just gonna squander and just party the rest of your life yeah yeah you know like we have this gift where all everybody's got something to change the world, you know. Yeah. Especially if you're in, if you're, I always say the whole relationship and something I see in my, this guy on podcast all the time. He says it all the time. God loves you. He just wants to have a relationship with you. Yeah. That's the, that's really it. Yeah, God loves yeah. you. He just wants to have a relationship with you. Yeah. And so that's just what I do through my music, really. And yeah. and then I, you give them tools. Whether it's your jokes, it gives them a sense yeah. of hope, yeah. and I can get through this whatever battle I'm going through. Yeah. And these worship songs, yeah. "Fight My Battles" or "Waymaker," you know, the letter, or, the healing rain. That's what we had healing felt. rain. Yeah, we had know? felt back in. Yeah, it it feels it it it. It's, I don't think I'm preaching anything new. I'm sort of just reminding yeah. people. <laughs> same since the '80s, it's the same message. Just reminding people. Yeah, yeah. And they and they're they're so. You think everybody, they they look, 
a lot of people are looking elsewhere, but they're looking for that. Yeah, I think I think they're looking else. They're looking. They're, li- they, they're looking in the wrong place. All the wrong. Yeah, but they're all looking for the same thing. They're looking for the same thing. They're, everybody's looking for the same thing. They're looking for what's the meaning of life? Why am I yeah. here? What are, we, what are we doing here? What are we doing yeah. here? And so they try to fill it with drugs. They try to fill it with this. They try to. And there's only one person that can fill it. And if and if that person, if you're out. I I told a wrote a story in my book about how I was in uh like in some airport holiday inn or something after a run of shows that at churches. A holiday inn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not good. I Nothing good it. ever happens in this story. <laughs> that I'm drinking and, and I'm trying to get, I was like, cause I knew that 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 at that hotel room alone felt like a prison door when it would close. Mm-hmm. And I knew I could I couldn't make it through the night just sober alone laying in there and somebody told me i was talking to i don't know like a counselor or a pastor or something i was sitting at that bar and i was like if jesus the man of jesus walked past i thought he'd be like like don't even call yourself a, a christian look at you in there you're embarrassing you're performing in churches and you're embarrassing to to me and i don't want to have nothing to do with this and don't even say you know me mm. and either the therapist or pastor he goes i where'd you get that idea i go oh no he goes the man of jesus would sit down next to you and be like hey it sounds it looks like you're in a lot of pain here you can go on and do whatever you want here i just i i got a better way for you i'm yeah. not mad at you yeah he just come hang out with you Gosh, and I, I never really, I've been in church my whole life and I never heard that. Which is unfortunate. And then a lot of, yeah, a lot of things now have been in the name of, in the name of religion have been mis. Right. Yeah. And that's, you, probably, and, that's probably the one thing that drives me crazy more than anything. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a peacemaker and I don't get mad and I'm not, yeah. I'm not prone to get angry, but that kind of stuff. Yeah. people manipulating people and in the and name of Christ, in the name of Christ yeah, and yeah. speaking things that are not true. Yeah. That's what sort of makes the hair stand on my neck a little bit. Well, it's, it's, it's hard because we like, we go to a lot of, we go to a lot of churches on the road. Cause I was, we grew, I was raised closest thing to a Pentecostal and it was, we would drive past 20 churches on the way to my church. Right. And this one's, don't don't go to the that youth group you're not allowed to go there right. this is a, this is the one right yeah and i go we've driven past churches that are you know they have the pride flags out front and then we go to churches that are have the tr- the american trump flag and we're like both of these <laughs> right both of these are yeah. coming in the in mm. the in the in the name the same name yeah and it's or then they're opposite or like if you if English was like your second language and you just saw it's it's so like I guess you could argue all the things back and forth, but that that the the personal experience that you had on the floor of your kitchen has guided you from that, and everybody you can debate and and say this guy is this or this guy and then it, but that's what if you drive from my from here to your house, how many churches are you gonna pass? Fifty. Well, uh, I think there's more churches per capita in Nashville than any church, any city in America. I believe I pass a lot. Yeah, pass a lot. I pass a lot coming down here. And they go, "This one's not. They're not. This one's. This is the one. This pastor, he untucks his shirt, so we're different." And it's so the local church. I feel like could could save the world, but it's all we're not unified. No, nah, certainly not. There's a lot of things where we are not, but we are not. Yeah. Everybody likes your music, though. <laughs> Not everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, you haven't have you ever we have you ever had anything close to like what would be considered like being canceled? But before cancellation or the internet existed, yeah, there back, ever... back, back in the day when Amy's it was both Amy and I, um, her ba- baby, 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 and then even Place This World when it was a hit on pop radio, I was doing VH1 Countdown. 
with and Luther with did, Luther Vandross. Did your dad call you oh. again and say, "Hey, you need to"? What did he say? <laughs> You need to straight. We need to no, get some things my dad, together. He, it, it was a great <laughs> opportunity. I have a lot of God stories about being VH1. I okay, won't yeah, get into yeah, all yeah. that. But, VH1, um, dude. I was yeah, so I was, VH1. I, so there was a Budweiser commercial in, just on the show. Just there was a Budweiser commercial. While you were on. Yeah, to be, yeah they, they go yeah. to a commercial. Nah, And dude, then I had a bunch, like of, bunch of stores in Alabama pulling my records off the shelves. Really? Yeah. yeah. As if you coordinated the ad. Yeah, like the, the- <laughs> I, 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 I support Budweiser. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, they did the same with Amy, too. Yeah. Okay, so you were on, yeah. And then they pulled, yeah. They pulled their, from the, that's in essence being canceled. Yeah. Is the, the, it was, really. The family bookstore. It's on a small the, scale. But yeah, yeah. But, but it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. So they said, I, only, I wonder how they've been like, how'd they see it? They must have been watching it. Right. Oh, they were probably watching you. And they, they saw somebody told them is what happened. Yeah, yeah. that's how it that's yeah, how happened. They told them yeah. you Smitty's on VH1 and there's a <laughs> Budweiser commercial. Why didn't when you texted me when I got why didn't you tell me that story? He'd be like, dude, I've been there. Listen, I got canceled one time. And the, and and that and that that same what would you call that? The fear? For, uh, oh, oh, you mean those people? Yeah. Because that still exists now. Yeah, it's. Um, yeah, you're just into not doing life right. You know, you're gonna sit there and pick. You're gonna just pay attention to, to every little thing that somebody else does, and it doesn't right. line up with yeah. what you think. So you're just. It's all about you. Right. Yeah. And this doesn't. And if you, yeah, if you invited invited a bunch of people over. Uh, to your house to watch you and there's a beer it makes you embarrassed or whatever that is we're like wow and then you go we have to like yeah. if, if if someone in church gets divorced right that's a we have to there's a lot everybody yeah. has a story about being kicked out of yeah. church right yeah because their faith is on is on some kind of shaky ground where it can't allow humans to be humans right or pain or suffering because everybody or, in that church has an issue everybody yeah. has an issue but that's you know, so it's what just a wild is so far from like and that's what i think my generation is like they read the book and then they see how you know they see a, a, a pastor with a private jet and they go huh that's it. I think that's everybody. They go, and that's a lot of what my comedy is. Yeah. Is I go, I'm on the team. I, I read the stories about the man of Jesus and I go, yeah, I, I want to be more like him, put others in front of myself, love your neighbor as yourself. But then I go, and I think that's everybody. Yeah. But that's been happening since long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just took on a different form. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You never had to. I feel like you do in a lot of ways stay out of the the headlines or the you're not you don't you're involved in any in, in terms of speaking out for or against things. It's just like, hey, we come in the name of I just think you have to be really, really careful. You yeah. Know? It's not yeah. that I don't won't stand up for something yeah. that I don't believe in. Right. You know, I'm getting everybody, I mean I'm getting people from the way left want me to start stand up and they're all mad about this and yeah, mad yeah. about that and yeah whether it's the guns or whatever yeah. and you know and i'm just going whatever if i do say anything lord this one i want, I want it to be exactly what you would yeah. say you know so yeah. i don't jump in the fray yeah for i think all the right reasons well i think yeah i think there's a lot of uh, there's some other christian whatever you call them, public figures or something that have been more like we try to be as neutral as we possibly can in terms of taking a side, right? In terms of like, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, certain polit political figures that you would like be seen taking a photo with, yeah. And it, like, there's a, and I go, I'm not like a comedian uh, Bill Burr. He asked another comedian, Burt Kreischer, was like, "Do you ever want to meet the president?" He goes, "No," because I want to stay, yeah. No matter what side of the president, yeah. And I think in the name of quote jesus or the scripture he, he was not for either side of the government right 
he was just he he was the anti he's like that's not where we're gonna we're gonna that's not how this is gonna be fixed yeah through laws right yeah and not that he didn't care about it but he just goes that's not what we're here for right i've had to be careful of that a little bit i mean back it's it's different today because we're more divided than we ever have been but you yeah. know i was you know i was in the white house like so many times with yeah. w and with especially george uh, senior you know oh, yeah, and, yeah and it was a great friendship and oh, yeah. I, we didn't agree on everything but yeah. the, but there was a lot of amazing things that happened especially right. my relationship with w with the age thing with bono and, oh yeah, yeah. So it's crazy crazy good stuff but um but i've, I've always wanted to be careful of not because everybody thinks i'm there's a lot of people who think i'm very i'm right oh i'm Mega oh yeah, they, right yeah, they, yeah yep, and, yep. and I want to I want to be able to have the ability to speak to both sides and so yeah. and that's why for yeah. a long time here for at least past decade and a half I've just tried to be neutral but it, not because but, you are in you have thoughts obviously I so thought, do I, and, so and if I'm pressed if I'm like yeah. and especially when it has to do with your kids your grandkids and what's their future gonna look like you yeah. know yeah I mean, I'm not afraid to tell you what I believe. Right, right. But it's right. really not what I. It's to the to, on some levels. I remember Billy Graham's going, well, "What about this? What about this? What about all this stuff?" It just doesn't matter what I think. Doesn't matter. That's what the book says. What's the yeah, book say? Go over there. Yeah. So I tend to sort of defer everything to what the scriptures say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was Billy Graham like? He was awesome. Really. Some great stories with Billy. I was, I would go see him on the well. The great thing, the Billy thing, is two things. Nineteen ninety four. He did a youth night at his crusade. The very first time he did it, met with lots of opposition. Um, what did people out front? No, all the leadership and the Billy okay. Graham Association. They thought he was lost his mind. In what year? This is ninety four. Okay. It's a Cleveland Stadium, and, he's, and he just said, he said we're Stadiums, not, we're, dude, are, we're, so we're not reaching the next generation. We're, with our programming, we're not reaching these kids. Okay. And he says, I want to have a rock concert. I want, he, he said, I want Michael W. Smith and DC Talk. And there yeah, were eight, that's probably where I got there saved. 80,000 people in that stadium. Dude, people don't understand and how many people that is. That's a lot of people. So and, we you, watched, and I watched 10,000 people. I thought 10,000 kids come forward. And I heard the best message I thought that Billy Graham had ever delivered. Very, very thought out speaking to kids and speaking to that generation. Where, what stadium? Cleveland Stadium, Cleveland, Ohio. Outside? Okay, because I saw it at the Georgia Dome. I okay. was probably 10. Okay. With Carmen. Okay. What and year would that have been? 94. Okay. Maybe 92. Okay. And I remember, we talk, we've talked about this before because we did a, a joke about how I went to this church over New Year's and they said, they're over... Um, Christmas Eve, and it was said text in to get saved, and I go, seems like it's getting too easy to get saved now because you can just text yeah. and you don't have to say it out loud. You kind of whisper. You don't have to raise your hand. Everybody's eyes are closed. I go, I remember you're in section three hundred, and you want to get saved. You had to come down there. Yeah, that takes twenty minutes. Yeah, remember that long walk. And I think the floors were empty. Yeah, they were because they were anticipating so many people coming down there. Yeah. And where were you? You were at the side stage. I was on the stage. I was on the stage, sitting playing. Beside. No, I, I'd already played. So DC Talk played. I played. My they were, they were opening just, for you. They were. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And my whole thing was just to prepare people's hearts for what he's going to say. That's that's my job, you know. So for what Billy was going to say. Yeah, and and I did I did a ton of youth nights, and then you know he retires, and then. I'd go see him in his home. He'd always pray for me. He's like, oh, my gosh. We had a lot in common. Five kids. Charlotte, right? Uh, Asheville, right? Asheville, right? Yeah. Or, uh, Black Mountain, yeah. which is right outside of Asheville. Yeah. Yeah. So then I'd go up, and then the last three times I went, he was too weak. And I would take my piano, and I'd sit it beside him, and I'd just play all his favorite hymns. Gosh, dude. And then he was too weak, and so I would put my hand on him, and I'd pray for him. It's like I'm going. Well, I, this is so surreal. You know, like the whole, just yeah. And then he, I think the last time I saw him was was two months before he yeah. passed. And he played at his funeral. I did. What song? Above all. 
Oh. I wonder how many people walking around this country have been went or 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 their lives are changed because of that. Because of that, what what kind of years would like you know? It's every artist has a good like you know six seven year run where they're just on top. Like that was from when to when when he, when Billy Graham was doing. I mean, could you imagine today if an evangelist was doing stadiums? I don't think we'll ever see anything like that. Maybe. What yeah. what, what years was that? Well, the youth night. Well, well, he's been doing it since the fifties. You know, the sixties in L.A. Gosh. and he's staying yeah. in L.A. for months, like two months, two three months in L.A. The, the tent full every night, three months. Crazy stuff. And, okay, how but, did, but 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 yeah. when he. My first thing with him was in the late eighties, but then it was the youth. We got to be friends, and then this the ninety four thing. That's when he began doing the youth nights. It was there, it was every time he did a crusade in the city. Yeah, there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but Saturday night was youth night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that and was, what? How do you? How would you tell? What would he say, or even you say? Like I, I struggle with having sold out shows and, and getting an ego or what would Bono say about how do you not, how do you not think you're better than people? I mean, does that make sense? Yeah. If everybody's well, like, we go and we're, we're uh, flying across the world to see Michael. Yeah. I, you know what? I think as you mature in your faith, you realize really fast, this is not about you. <laughs> okay. Well, let's start. <laughs> I love that for every deep it's question, just he's about, just got a one line, shut it down. It's not about it you. I feel like just, he, I'm I'm on the kitchen floor. He's, <laughs> he's like, hey, John, you got to. He's you like, gotta, check, the yeah, you gotta check the book. You got to check the book. But you know, I think as a celebrity and I think as anybody who's on a stage, it's something I think probably every artist yeah. has to deal with on a nightly basis going, all right, there's either 3,000 people out there or there's 22,000 people yeah. out there. And so every night I just say, Lord, I want my posture to be beautiful yeah. and i want to i want to walk out there with extreme humility and be able to and if there are any, any glory that's coming my way i'll be able to deflect it yeah and sort of deflect it toward you and not right. go, hey you know i'm the you know so but i think as it's a it's a it's a we have really interesting jobs you know yeah when, yeah. when people come to hear us and so you gotta keep it in perspective and i billy just Billy was good for me in regards to that sort yeah. of thing, you know. But and the guy what, was so godly; just he just was so on point. And I just don't, you know, and when he would walk out on stage, I mean, it was a five minute standing ovation. Every, <laughs> I, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Is like, how do you, like, what, like, what are they cheering for? The the what what the man had done. I, I think they're cheering for what he's done. I think the, they're and honoring. He's a, he's a hero. He's a hero of the faith. Yes, yes. And they probably look at me and they look at, we are heroes of the faith on some level. Do you see he was going to say, and they look at me and they, well, <laughs> no, they come, on. Yeah, they, come on. He didn't finish that sentence. But, but, they, he, but wow. I think it's like, you know, they're sitting there going, oh my gosh, because yep. I would do the yep. same thing for somebody. It's like, oh my gosh, that's, that's yep. what, you know, yes. but it's more like, God, thank you for that guy. Because you yes, use that guy who's a weak guy your honor, yep. and you used, used him as a conduit. And what, that song or that message to that person changed my life. And you thank just want, you for, you're, you're just honoring exactly, the you're, person. You're applauding yeah. that. And then the thing that you said makes the hair on your neck stand up is when, when you do see, like somebody was, I saw on a TikTok or something when an artist about a Christian artist, like charging money for like a meet and greet mm -hmm. is like a little bit tricky. And I've even thought of myself, I go, all right, well, well, and then the, the conversation about ticket sales and then, and then the, the secondary ticket market. So you go, well, you, the thing about the Billy Graham, if the Georgia Dome costs a hundred thousand dollars to rent. So you, you, you don't charge, you no. need <laughs> money, you do need money. And then they gotta, you gotta get around somehow. So then you go, well, we should fly or like but it would be if we flew private we could get from city fly player out private i'm sure he did what's that did billy fly private 
He did, but he it was it was on loan by a friend of mine who gave him his plane. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. See, so it's a, so it was a gift. That was a gift. Yeah, Billy. You know, and he and and especially if a guy's getting older and hard, has yeah. a harder time traveling, then you go well, and that's what I don't have a problem with private planes. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's but, gonna be the but, title but, of the podcast. But, yeah. but I, but I, but it's when it gets to. I don't have a problem with them either. Yeah, when it, but when it gets to a flight, because I had one for thirteen years. Yeah. But I did it for my I did it for my kids. I did it for yeah. my family. It's like Jeff Fox where he'd said the same thing. He's like, I gotta be home for I'm home and I'm driving kid my kids to yeah. school the next day. Yeah. You know. What how do I justify one without kids? <laughs> That's what, how do it's I, called, I it's called productivity. <laughs> yeah. Guys, I need one. Yeah, yeah, yeah But I yeah, don't yeah. do it all the time. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I mean I did it a, a lot with sure. my family, yeah, all yeah. my kids are all grown up. So, right. so to me it's not as uh, I don't I don't have a plane anymore. Yeah, yeah. I probably will never buy a plane. Yeah. You know, if I have to, yeah, I'll charter or somebody will charter and get me mm-hmm. somewhere. So I want to get back to what you were saying because you were saying something about Billy. How do you not? Are you, what are they? What are they cheering for? You know, it was that. Yeah. And, and just, you know, he kept that all that in perspective. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. But you not said something that no, was something about. Either. Oh yeah, you were talking about the the uh, VIP and the uh, oh, this whole yeah, thing. Yeah. I, I I think about this a lot because I always want to make sure I meet with my management people, and I've got a great business manager, and I'm yeah. going. I always wrestle, and I think it's a good way with ministry and commerce. How's yeah, all that yeah, fit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's all that work? Yep. It's what we do for a living, so we got to. Yep. I mean, for me, I've had to feed my family. I got to yep. make a living. You got to pay the rent, right? And how do you do that? And then all of a sudden you, it gets completely out of hand and it's all about the money. Yeah. So and you're selling, you're after, at the merch table, you got a $20 prayer cloth that's going to cure you of cancer. You'll never find one of those on my table. Well, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I sell them. So, do yeah. you really? <laughs> no, I'm out of here. Yeah. No, no yeah. It, it is. It is. But that's, it's those uh, kind of things that, but again, I don't, I don't, yeah. I just, there's some things I just don't, I don't get it. And you hear, yeah. but I don't, I don't hang around the rumor mill. I don't want yeah, to know, yeah. but do you do you, from time to time you hear stuff about people in my genre, yeah. what people are doing, what yeah. they're doing. I mean, it's just like, what? And really? Go, yeah. I mean, really? So I, it's, it's a little. Yeah. It's tricky because I, so we don't do, we don't do any, we don't do any churches anymore. Well, I haven't since I since 2019. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, I we get invited all the time. Yeah, and I and I I go well if if I if you go to the Ryman, your show 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever it is, you go. Hey, I would like to see him. I like those songs. I'm gonna pay fifty dollars to go see. They got to pay for the building, the flight, the band, all the stuff. He's going to make some money. That's a that seems like a fair. Yeah, that's that's what everybody's doing. Yeah, but then you go, well, we're going to the church. Well, does he is he, and, and like there's probably churches that you like theologically you don't align a hundred percent, but you're like for the most part. Instead, so they go, well, is he making money from this or is he? Yeah, it's a very like Christ, like re- being in the ministry and being in politics are the two careers. Being a police officer, so be like, hey, this is not about me. I'm here to serve. Ever. So then you see a pastor. I'm not sure that's. What, <laughs> I'm not sure it's that way in DC. So. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or yeah, 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 so go, go, yeah. Yeah, I, I get your point. You go, right. Yeah. So then you go if you're if you're a church you go hey we we're we're a church there's a pastor in a field then he goes hey there's a hundred people coming here jesus would just preach on the hillside right because all those people could hear and somebody goes hey if we got a microphone 300 people could hear and they're like hey if we got a roof over this place we could do it in the rain hey if we got some seats people would feel more comfortable hey if we got some cushion seats Hey, if we got a better sound system, a better guitar player, yeah. a better lights, fog machines, and then it, it, it right. 
and that's everybody everybody draws the line somewhere right. and that's why every church is there's one on every block because they go we're we're gonna draw the line here and then we're gonna well we'll get a fog machine yeah and then they get a video screen and then they and you know and then everybody goes this is too much we're leaving this church yeah yeah what are your thoughts on how contemporary worship has evolved in the church in a church setting Say again, like how? How? Just like from when you started doing contemporary worship to where contemporary worship stands now. What are your feelings on how it's how that evolution has been? Obviously, now that you see churches with the fog machines and the lights yeah, and all that type I, of stuff. I, 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 I'm not a big fan of all the production and all that. I think it can be distracting. I, I think people are looking for authenticity, and I'm not saying that that people that do that are not authentic. Sure. You know, I feel like I can read between the lines a little bit and yep. when something moves me and you feel like it's and then something that doesn't feel right. You know, you just go, man, it just doesn't feel right to me. Not based, but not that you're basing everything on feelings, but you're just a discernment. You have a discernment yeah, yeah. of going, I'm not sure that's, that, that's not a road to be going down, you know. Yeah. I think when you get to the church's things, like, hey, everybody's got issues. Everybody's. You know, there's not a perfect church out there, but there's some ones that are not very good, and there's some ones that are <laughs> really good, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, you know, and I'm sure that I would disagree, have some disagreement about maybe every little place I've been, but, you know, I've been, like I was just at World Outreach Church this last weekend. Where's that? It's Murfreesboro. Okay. It's, oh, it's Alan Jackson. Oh, yeah. And Alan Jackson? Isn't it Alan? A L L E. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Not the country singer. Oh, yeah. But he is a great friend, and he's just in. It just everything feels authentic. It's big. Yeah. There's screens. It's a big church, um, but there's something pure about the place. There's yeah. something pure, and I think it all, it all starts at the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it all starts at the top, and and so who's, who's leading? Who's the leader? Yeah, is is the leader dialed in does he have it dialed in if you got a leader that's legit and authentic and humble yeah um then i think that just it just tinkers down to to who's all in yeah. leadership under you to me that's where it starts mm -hmm. you know? so would you think that like i've thought so what, whatever religious leader that you've that we have all felt whether publicly or is off track right i feel like everybody like you felt a call on your life right that that god had a plan for you or he had a uh, so like a pastor would say i felt like god told me to reach these people or start this church right yeah. I, I i i believe whether it's uh benny hinn or joel osteen or stephen furtick or whatever that it, it starts not that those guys are bad i like all those guys are friends of mine but it starts pure and then somebody goes like my comedy i started just making jokes and then this christians were like hey we like it and kind of come over here right. and then like there's a lot of the preachers preachers would be like man i like kind of yelled or went off on a rant and then somebody posted it and it got a lot of views or and then you you just kind of without being like checked and whether that's a, a an overseer or a board or even a wife that it just kind of if humanity takes it it will just kind of go yeah and that's what happened to me also so i can't judge it just kind of goes in the way of the attention or the the traction or the money or whatever it is and it gets kind of off track but i feel like everyone started with a sincere belief to help people yeah. i would even say politicians that they in their local city council when they were 25 years old in their neighborhood right. they go man it seems like a lot of trash in this neighborhood if i start an initiative and then they got into and then it goes in a way they're like I, this isn't even anywhere close to where i started but i do believe that everybody a public servant pastor that they started with good in mind yeah well, I think, let me just say that you know, I haven't done everything right, believe me. 
We're going to get but, to that. We yeah, I know we are. I know, I know it's coming. You're saving the best for last, <laughs> I'm right? Kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. But, you know, I think about, I've been doing this for four decades, you know, Gosh. and and I got this amazing wife. Yeah. And I got this amazing prayer group that's been together for 35 years. So to me, it's like it's unbelievable. when you're, when you're in the limelight and you've, and you're leading some big church or whatever, and it, 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 it takes off. It's got to be some accountability. There's got to be accountability. Yep. And I think what happens with a lot of these people is that somebody's running the show, you know, and and it's all about church growth, and it's all yep. about that. And you get just so distracted about what's the core. Why are we here? What are we doing here? What are we doing? Yeah. Yep. And to me, the best example in the book just go, just read Acts. Go read Acts. Where go it started. Like, go look in the book. Bro. Look in the yeah. book. And that's to me. That's always the model I go to is yeah. what, what happened in Acts, what happened to those people and how yeah. they built the church and just yeah. loving on people. And, and yeah, so I agree with yeah. you. I'm, I'm sure it probably all started out with a pure heart. And, you know, it's almost like, uh, you know, you get in the system. You know, you're in the That's system. That's exactly what happened to me. Yeah. yeah. I would the, say it happened to me. I, I made those choices on my own. It didn't happen yeah, to me, yeah. but I, yeah. And that the, it, it just kind of get a little taste, a little taste, and then all of a sudden you're sucked into it, yeah. and you're a part of the system, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you're you're yeah beyond. So like, then you're like a puppet a yeah. little bit, and then yeah. going, man, I, I don't want, I want to be that guy. Do, do, do people in um, that are coming up in the faith, especially artists, music, do they, does, does anyone ever ask you or ask you for help or? Well, I think I think I'm starting to get some people want to know how I survive success, and yeah, how did you do it? How'd you keep your family together? Because you got a lot of families that are falling apart. Yeah, these these guys and bands are on the road for two hundred two hundred fifty days out of the year, and they got three kids. It's like yeah. that ain't going to work. Yeah, not going to work. Yeah, you know. So why? Sorry, go ahead. No, no. just so. So I've just had the opportunity on a few occasions. And I think they're going to continue to come. Yeah, I think pro- probably part of my role in the future is being a father. Yeah, and boy, do I ever know this this generation. I mean, everybody. Yeah. But I'd say especially this generation, and especially I look at my genre. We need fathers. Yep. Yeah, I think that. I think that is when you say you say that you, your relationship with your dad has always been very that he guided you that he loved you but he didn't it wasn't this rule with an iron fist right right and a lot of a lot of these people that are kind of my age or my generation and they go well they're now starting to have children and they go well we got to pass down some we have to Hey, don't cuss. Why? Uh, we we need some kind of framework for a little compass. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit, and you don't. But you don't. A lot of our that we're kind of not sure what to do totally with the faith of our parents. Right. Yeah. So we go. Well, you know, in my church, a girl got pregnant and got kicked out of the church and you go, well, that doesn't, I don't think I'm with that. Or, or if you got caught drinking alcohol out of the church. All right. Well, I don't, I'm not with that, but I also would like, I have children to have something. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that are, yeah, hurt by the church, but they, but they don't, but you go to, we have open mic night. It went at Zany's. Every mm-hmm. Monday we get on there. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Is there? Let's say there's 15 comedians. I would say 11 to 14 of them have a joke about Jesus, right. the man of Jesus, right? So, yeah. so if why, it, and why is that? Why you think? That? Well, I I take it's now it's all anti. It's not pro Jesus. It's 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 anti Christian or anti. But the, but they can't. A comic is is trying to synthesize, wait, the Republicans said this and they act like this, or the left said this. They're making 
jokes, but they're not jokes. They're right. trying to right. sort out there and by making fun of it helps them deal with like I have a lot of jokes about me not being a man, right? Like I don't yeah. know how to change oil. Like my dad said, go get me the Phillips. And I came back with the neighbors. Like I don't yeah. like, but and that helps me. I right. it's a real insecurity. Yeah. But it does help me. Everybody laughs together. I feel better, right? Yeah. So everybody, this man that lived 2,000 years ago, if, it was, if there was nothing to it, there would be no jokes about it. I agree with that. And everybody, everybody, in the, in the, in, in, that's not even Nashville, in Los Angeles, everybody's got a joke about this guy. Because mm-hmm. I think... Whatever you've heard about it or whatever, you lay your head on the pillow and you go, ah, there might be something to that. Yeah. And I don't know what that, I, I feel like everybody, they go, yeah, it's uh, the pastor with blue hair on TV and the anointing oil that's going to, and people getting prayed for and falling over. It's a, it's a real, it's a lot of weird stuff, but they don't dismiss, they go, They there's something that they go. I don't know. He might he might have been who he said he was. Yeah, is that a good way to describe that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no one's talking I love about. It. I love that they're even even admitting maybe, maybe this thing's true. <clears throat> well, that every joke. If I don't if I don't think like I just joke about what I think about. Right. So all the things I'm thinking about all day, whether it's the economy or politics or dating or I, I, those are the things I'm joking about. It was like, what's your show about the things I think about. Yeah. And there's no jokes about Muhammad. There's no jokes about Joseph Smith. Not the, there's not, there's not, there's not, it's not, there's no jokes about anything. Right. <clears throat> but everybody still, all these years later is still like, what's up with that guy? Yeah. And I, 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 it's anti, but it's to me very, very encouraging. Yeah. That they can't just put it aside. Right. As, as there, it's not, it's not true. It's a right. fairy tale. It's a fantasy. It's a, it's a, it's a indication that they, they think about it. Yeah. As you said, they think about it. Yeah. And that, when you, when you go to Budapest or, or, these places and you're just i feel like you're you you come in peace absolutely and the and the show what is the show we have a i wouldn't even call it a show what is the worship experience whatever we have a we have a we have a gift for you right cost fifty dollars but we have a gift for you <laughs> <laughs> but you're saying this is the thing that i have you should it's it's changed my life. You should be a part of it. Yeah, that's it. But don't believe it because I believe it. Like, don't. Yeah. It's gotta. You gotta. It's, you gotta own it. It's gotta. And 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 I think I honestly think it happens every night. I think somebody's life gets changed. You know. Gosh. And, man. You know. You might not might not find out till the mm-hmm. till the other, they get to the other side. You know. Mm-hmm. But I'm speaking truth. And I'm speaking it in a loving way, and I'm speaking it through a through this thing called music, and yeah. it can just be a melody. It can be a melody. Yeah. This then the light bulbs goes off. Somebody could told me I got saved by Change Your World show. It was a DC Talk. It was a big, you know, pretty intense show, and yeah, but somebody actually got saved at that show. I get that a lot. And the people that the people <clears throat> who are refuse this message or did not want to come or let's say are anti you're not mad at them no, absolutely that's not. the thing that's the thing that you're like you're like there's a lot of like you know we're we're coming and we're and it's like if you speak from a lot of, if you speak from you laying on your kitchen floor being undone i've tried this is not working out for me and that experience you had with the Lord and you operate the rest. Like if you believe if in Noah's Ark is a real story or an allegory, you're like, you can debate, we can debate that all day. Right. But right. You, you can't, someone's experience they've had. I, I mean, I, when I was in rehab, I was sitting on a 
I was sitting on a bench. It was in the middle of, it was in Arizona and you're we looking out all over the whole that desert and it, it, and it, it looked very dangerous that like, I was just going to shut down all my social media and just move out into the country and play golf and have a garden or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go back and face all this or, or, or I'm out. Right. Yeah. And I was sitting there and instead of God sitting like against me, he was sitting on the bench with me and he was also looking out at all of it. And he goes, this looked pretty dangerous out there. I go, yeah, he's like, might be some opposition, might be some hard conversations to have, might be some, it's not probably all going to go well, but he's like, if you want to go, I'll go with you and that's it and I, I like yeah you can argue with 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 politics and the right or the left right but you can't really argue that the kitchen no and that and if you operate that's what i feel like your whole career you've operated off that yep. not got rescued everybody needs a rescue and i'm offering the same yep. thing back i'm offering the same thing because it's for everybody yeah and if people, people out ever with like picketing, protesting out for any shows, we've had a few, yeah, but but not lately, not lately. Yeah, you know, was on when I was on Winter Jam in 2018, they were picketing outside, and I thought I was like, oh, I'm, I'm a Christian, light in the darkness, I'm, uh, I'm on the good side. But then I realized they were picketing; they were more Christian. And they were like, this is all commercial and uh, smoke and mirrors. And I was like, oh, I'm on the bad side. Or I was like, oh, I thought I was, ah, dang it. <laughs> I, thought I, was, I thought these were the, these are the devil worshipers. And they were like, we're no. against Christians. These no. were the more right. pure Christians. And I was like, oh, dang yeah. it. <laughs> the legalists out there. Yeah. I was like, oh, I thought I was on the, oh, oh wow. Well. Uh, one, thing, one thing left to talk about. Okay. Significant moment in your life in 1992. Okay. You don't remember? I'm trying to remember if it's 92, but go ahead. The most beautiful people. People magazine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. You, you see how he played it's that off? Embarrassing. I, so I like how he played that off. He goes, I don't think I remember. Uh, I don't think I remember yeah. that. It's you framed. It's, it's framed it, at the house. Hey. Yeah, it's in the garage. <laughs> in the garage, though. It's not when you walk in the house, you got to go around. A, it's, it's in the like, office. You know what? The whole, the whole thing's stupid. Really, really. You, you've got People Magazine, who, are, who, who whoever's on their little committee, yeah, are yeah, going yeah. to decide who the fifty most beautiful people are in the world. Come on, I'm, I'm gonna say if they, I mean, if they called me, I would have a hard time passing not. it up. <laughs> what do hey, they do? What do they call you? You remember? Yeah, I mean, I've got my publicist. I was on Geffen Records, and oh and, my, and she called up. She said, you know, she said, hey, you're you're, you're you, you, they they pitched you. You're you're in the fifty most beautiful people and people like that. I went. I, I remember saying, it's going. My mom and dad are gonna freak out. Oh <laughs> That's yeah, what I said. yeah. I didn't really. I mean, I'm sure I got puffed up a little bit, but I, I was probably more excited for my mom and dad. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like, and then I looked at it, and it's like I got the Michael Bolton hair. I got so much Ooh, hair. Yeah. It's just you don't have to. You have a little to bit pose. of the mullet. You things. do a, it's like, it's like uh, awful photo you shoot. Know? You had a photo shoot or no? I did do a photo shoot. Shirtless? Not shirtless. No, nah, not shirtless. Yeah. You gonna try to find it? There's yeah. no way that exists. Yeah. yeah. I, did, I, I did. I did. I said. I did ask one time to do a, a back in the day do a. Underwear commercial and I passed pretty quick. So oh yeah, yeah, he passed on that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, probably, probably good. Well, that, probably, probably good move. That I would see. <laughs> I would see the church people would go by the. Hey, we got it. We're taking the. Uh, oh. We're taking the albums out of the family bookstore with that. I did. Somebody told me we were at um at the um Corey Asbury was leading worship at uh, the NASCAR race a couple weekends. Yeah. Ago. yeah, and I don't know where the conversation was, but somebody said that Chris Tomlin. He was either down there or something like it. Chris Tomlin was, is the most listened to artist in human history. Yeah, I think just like so, just his songs. Yeah, because yeah. they said well, because prior to like the 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 Spotify YouTube era, no no one before that, right? Because it has to be shareable to every right. and every church, right? And in the world, sings. That now he's not the most famous, right. but the most 
listened to musical yeah. artist in in the on the planet in the planet's history. Yeah, yeah, is Chris Tomlin. It's crazy, isn't it? That is wild. That is yeah. wild. And you're probably up there. I don't think I'm up there. I mean, we would be having Michael Jackson, Prince. <laughs> yeah, but Garth, the, I mean, Garth. No, nah, but if you go to like Uganda and you're in the you're in the in the airport, you would hear Michael Jackson. Probably so. You would hear. You would. You wouldn't hear Chris Tomlin. In not the in airport. the airport. Not in the airport. But, but, but I think Jackson. they sing because of the churches and everywhere in the world. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. And that's where you go, like, um, like let's say Taylor Swift wants to go to the mall. You go, well, you can't because it'll right or i want to we're like you you can't you you're kind of called to a greater i should just be able to behave like everyone else we're like yeah we it, it and chris tom was the nicest guy in the world yeah i always see him down at 30a yeah, yeah. then you go man what a, what a what a what an unbelievable i wouldn't even call it a responsibility a uh uh maybe a calling that he's, he's for something you know, you see those athletes or whatever, and, and you know, Kobe Bryant or every, all the kids were out Friday night partying, and you know, he was in the gym, right? Right? He yeah. was in the gym. He was, yeah. And there's a lot of well, everybody gets to, and what whatever you're saying, everybody has that a gift to bring to the world Absol in some way. Abs I absolutely believe it. Even the worst person on the planet, they just don't know it yet. Yeah. Well, I thought I always said the only reason I ever started getting better is because when I thought my life had value, when people were saying it's not you're bad, you're screwed up, you made poor choices, that you're good, you're infinitely chosen by God and you're worthwhile to be a human, right? So if you are, if you feel like you are here and then, uh, a night alone with a six pack of alcohol is going to bring you bad. It's a good trade. But if you think you're here, that is now a bad right. trade. Yeah. And that's only, that's only by understanding your worth and your value. Right. And you go, Oh, I'm man. I'm it, but it's, but it's so, yeah, it's so hard for people to understand that about themselves, especially if someone has given you the message that you're trash or you're not, or, or they've discarded you in some kind of way. Yeah. It's almost, yeah, it's almost impossible. Spoken word is powerful. Yeah. That's all I just I speak nothing but positive over myself and over yeah. everybody I come in contact with. So, And the truth. And yeah. the truth. And you have to, and you have to ooze the truth through your, just through your demeanor. Yeah. You know, just, I mean, I always pray that I love this. I love the, um, oh gosh, uh, why does it totally go blank? There's a famous quote. Um, um, more money, more power. No, uh, St. Francis of Assisi. <laughs> no, St. Francis of Assisi, who said, uh, preach always if necessary, use words. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. love that. And and I just it just reminded me real quick of what I think about the whole VH1 thing when I was up there. And I remember I remember just walking in there. And back in this place, the place in in this world days, I was doing all these star parties and, yeah. and it was like, well, it was a whole, di yeah. like I had to have a lot, I had a lot of people around me because I had a yeah. lot of women and yeah, yeah, all that kind yeah, of great yeah, stuff. Yeah. But I remember I had this beautiful lady doing my makeup in VH1 and she was, and I just kept, Lord, just use me. I just, just and we just talking and, yeah. And, uh, she started getting like kind of emotional. She said, there's something, there's something different. Baby. Yeah. And I went out, yeah, I mean, what, 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 what do you mean? She said, "You just there's so much peace in your life. What is it?" Yeah, and so I just, that's Jesus. You yeah. know, it's a simple well, I thought answer. You were gonna say the and mullet, then, or and uh, wasn't the mullet. No, yeah, was but a, she yeah. just began it. She, she knew. Yeah, she yep. just saw it. She, yep. I didn't say a thing. She yep. Just saw it. And yep. That's 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 the man I hope to be. Yep. You know, for the yep. rest of the days of my life, yeah, that can, I can just well, be I, that. We've we've I've felt that from you, and everybody in here has felt that from you. But you you go. For whatever my my journey of sobriety has been, I've been sober for three and a half years. There's a lot. I mean, every day, 
every day, somebody who would either DM or text me, they go, hey, this person, where is an, where are the AA meetings? Yeah. Or like, and I don't, I don't, I mean, I talk about sobriety some, but the, everybody goes, well, I don't know, but that he, that guy seems to be doing better. Yeah. Meaning me in, in not in my whole life, but in that area, yeah. they yeah. go, and I never said a word. But they're going to reach out to you. They go, hey, he yeah. he has it. Yeah. And that's what the gospel. They go, well, he's not out here on the street corner with a picket. He goes, right. that's something different about that guy. Yeah. What does that guy have? And that's what everybody's looking for. Yeah. Yeah. And he live in a way that he go. I, I never really, I never really heard you speak or, or in, I'm saying I've been to your shows, but and we heard your music, but you're like that guy. That guy seems to, I want that, whatever mm. that is. And, and myself and everybody carry yourself in that way. Mm. When I see you at the country club. <laughs> Who's better at golf, you or Toby? <laughs> Toby. Is he? <laughs> He's a good golfer. And then who else is down there with us is Dave. Dave Ramsey. Yeah, Dave. Have you seen him down there? I do from time to time. And who's your our comedian guy? Who's oh yeah, still, Nate's down there. Oh Nate, yeah, he's doing all right. I think he's he's doing. Right. He's a good golfer. Yeah, great, great golfer. Yeah, great golfer. He, yeah. But he plays out at um, it's at, what's the golf course I love? It's out uh, in the country. Yeah, yeah, I know what the one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, you got to get anybody. You got to sell a couple more world tours. To yeah, you do. Right over there. <laughs> yeah, you do. Should've well, we bought, love. We should have bought how, a how lot does, there a long time ago. There you go. Is, are you going to be around uh, the states any? Say again. Are you touring around the states anyone? If we I am. can plug you, we come to your shows. Got a little. Just a little short, little 10, 11 city thing I'm doing here in May. Oh, and then I head yeah. to South Africa in June. Yeah, a little flex. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A little south there. Well, we love you, brother. We appreciate you coming thanks, by. Thanks for having me. Michael W. Smith. I mean, yeah, sure, it was a little weird. But on the net, net on the, on the, it, it, it was a positive. But it was a positive. <laughs> you cannot be serious. But on the net, it's a positive.